by the Zarelia Lakes near Almiros have taken place the last eight years extensive researches by geologists of the University of Athens and Volos with the participation of the Swiss geologist Dietrich Stoeffler from the University of Zurich who first discovered partially molten zirconium by rock samples found in the lakes era. Now the discovery of partially melted zirconium that is created by temperatures of at least 1400 degrees Celsius is for planetary geologists uh, that are engaged in the discovery and certification of craters of meteoritic origin only an indication and not the final proof of the meteoritic origin of a crater, like those in Almiros. My researches by the Zarelia Lakes started by the year 2008, but first in 2013 Akulte focused on examining rock samples collected from different depth levels of more than 1.5 meters and up to about 3 meters deep uh, around the uh, lake era. These last samples could, for the first time, take us back now and explain the history of the Twin Lakes and finally provide us with scientific information, e evidence of the real identity of the asteroid that we believe had hit the ground and created the craters near Almiros. And here I had for the first time promising findings which were asked uh, to be examined and sent to two top planetary geologists by Tony Irving of the Department of Earth and Space Science at the University of Washington in Seattle and by Ted Bunce of the University of North Arizona. The first test and analysis of the samples showed interesting facts as they were first excluded the volcanic origin of uh, some material and then according to the data obtained from the Tony Irving's associates the origin of some samples was found to contain for the first time as far as I know about any previous researches by the Zerelia lakes in a very small quantities trace elements uh, of uh, two very rare minerals that have extraterrestrial origin These two minerals, the tyanite and camasite, which do not occur together as minerals anywhere on the surface of our planet, are mainly produced under space conditions by iron meteorites and meteorites generally rich in metallic iron. Both of these extraterrestrial minerals were located in nickel grains in a small but not sufficient quantity as trace elements that according to Tony Irving does not allow us directly to identify the extraterrestrial origin of the material by the samples tested. Further investigations by Tony Irving have concluded that the trace elements of camasite and tyanite were found in rock samples that are from anthropogenic origin and characterized nowadays as slag. After showing these samples uh, to a metallurgist expert, former professor of the University of Athens, his uh, conclusion was that this slag are from ancient origin. So my hypothesis now is that these samples tested by Tony are a twice remelted meteoritic iron material that was tried to be extracted from the original impact material that was containing the first remelted meteoritic iron and this process took place from the ancient Greek settlements existing around the Zerelia lakes for thousands of years after the crater formation. In total a number of samples tested by Ted and Tony have shown at least three different types of rock formations which we cannot directly combine with each other if we cannot first follow the scientific puzzle which is going to give us the final circumstances and the events that took place thousands of years ago in the Zerelia Lakes era. First of all, it seems that we have one or two small asteroids of some 5 to 25 meters diameter consisting of sufficient quantity of iron. 
Now, this asteroid originating from the main asteroid belt by entering the atmosphere of our planet moved from the southeast to the northwest and finally broke down either shortly before the first impact or immediately afterwards into two main pieces which formed the two current craters by the lakes in Zerelia. Part of the meteorite has evaporated during the impact as is usually is the case by conditions where very high temperatures above 1400 degrees Celsius are created. Luckily, some of the remaining material of the asteroid could have survived the impact and have been incorporated with earthly material and then formed new rocks which we call impactites. In fact, such rocks as byproducts created by the impacts of asteroids may differ greatly from each other so that we have many different types of such material as impact glass, impact fall brasias, shatter cones, and etc. Exactly these types of material I believe we have found by my researches around the Zerelia lakes, especially from depths from around 1.5 to 3 meters deep. My theory now is based on my research and I'm going to explain what has happened to the meteoritic material that the asteroid transferred to the ground, survived the impact and embedded with terrestrial material to form impact tides which previous scientific researchers have not been able to locate in the region around the lakes. Now the finding of nickel bearing camasite and tyanite uh, together with troilite in combination which speaks in my opinion very clearly about embedded meteoritic iron in the samples found deep underground in the era. By my estimations the material created after the impact and that it is that containing remelted meteoritic iron must have already been identified by the first inhabitants who settled the Magula era around the Zerelia lakes already around 5800 BC. But these people had not sufficient know-how to extract the meteoritic iron from the impact tides. In fact, further samples provided us with more information about the attempt to extract the and acquire the iron they contained from the local Axian Greek population probably much later in history and maybe somehow around 1200 BC. The Zerelia Lakes has now been included in the Natura 2000 and recognized as a protected era. They are supervised and they are open finally for visitors and the public. The first part of the remelted meteoritic material found and recognized by Takis Theodosiu is passing now the final examinations in order that the Zerelia lakes will be soon officially the first asteroid impact site in Greece and one of its kind because of its history worldwide. This is Takis Theodosiu, member of the board of IMCA and member of the Meteorological Society Asteroid Day Coordinator for Greece. Thank you very much for hearing us.